Hey everybody, Brad here. Just wanted to give a quick update on my home theater room. Um, as you can see here, I have my home theater room in pieces. Wanted to let you guys know exactly what's going on here with this guy. So my projector died, my Epson projector, which is now sitting on the shelf up there. The bulb died finally after about seven years. And I did buy another bulb. First, I, I tried a generic bulb off of Amazon, installed the bulb. It looked absolutely terrible. It was really cloudy. The picture was distorted. Um, thought it was probably the generic bulb. So I ordered a genuine Epson bulb, put that in, looked exactly the same. So I think that a something in my 1040... My Epson 1040 projector right there died at the same time the bulb died or that component caused the bulb to die. So I have ordered a 4K projector. Now, if you guys are familiar with uh, projectors at all, you know that 4K projectors are very expensive. Um, most of them use this method called um, pixel shifting. So what it does is it projects a 1080p image then it doubles it and moves it over and projects the second image so fast that your eye can't see effectively making 4k out of an original 4k image i ordered an anchor a-n-k-e-r cosmos max 4k it is led powered not laser um the best the the most acceptable laser projectors that do 4k are about three grand i've spent a thousand uh, actually 1100 on a renewed uh, Anchor Cosmos Max will be here in two days. I decided to take this time to go ahead and finish my theater room. Now, as you can see here, we have a lot of ambient light just because the walls are, are a lighter color. Now, when I built the room, I built it from scratch from a guest bedroom. I created this wall myself. I sanded down the wall. And I used Lowe's Home Cinema screen paint. Um, I framed up the wall using a projector calculator. I made the frame on my um, my my uh, miter saw. So I, I created the frame on my miter saw, and it came out awesome. Looks great. Um, right away, I can see some issues with my wall box is a little crooked right there, which are usually covered up anyway. You don't see them. The equipment's pushed right back against them. I designed this for this entertainment center to flow right down here. Um, I ran power and HDMI. HDMI goes from in the wall there all the way up over to the projector um, shelf up there where the projector sits. I'm not 100% sure I'm going to be using the shelf unless it works out when I get the new projector and it projects correctly. And last time I ended up just um, strapping it to the bottom because the Epson projector had really no way to project. I couldn't adjust the keystone good enough where it could go down enough to hit this. It was literally projecting onto the ceiling. Only thing I'm worried about is this fan being in the way. I've added that since, and I don't know if the projector being on top of this shelf is going to hit the fan, but if it does, I'm going to have to remove my Moon Man right there, my little astronauts um I, I think at the very worst that's what i would have to do because it is a slight downward um projection to get to the screen from the center of the lens up there you can see up there i did a wall box a double wall box with power and one of those little brush um hdm brush uh inserts so you can run a, a cord through it and bugs and stuff can't get through it um, the shelf is a glass floating shelf um, as you can see, I had the projector strapped to the underside there and upside down. This time I'm going to turn the Anchor Cosmos Max upside down and lay it on top of the shelf because it has a LED star uh, constellation on the bottom. Uh, you'll be able to kind of see through the frosted glass there. Now, another thing was my other projector was quite a bit brighter. It has a standard 200 watt bulb. This epson um, home cinema 1040 right there the new one is led um, it's quite a bit dimmer maybe half the brightness now i ran this projector up here on 
eco mode the whole entire time I had it because it was so bright. You could actually have the window open here and still easily project on the screen and see the picture. The new projector, LED, going to be less bright, so I'm making strides to get this room brightness down quite a bit. First thing is the whole entire room is going to be that color, so it's all going to be that dark shade of green. I forgot what the name of it is. It's a dark, like, brownish green. Um, I'm going to do the ceiling as well, so I need to take this vent out. I need to remove my rear surround speakers there and um, get this room prepped and go ahead and paint the whole entire room. Now, if the shelf doesn't work or I have to lower it, then that's going to be a little bit of work, but I think I can manage to figure that out. I'm going to leave my shelf here that has the my work my artwork on it. It's just all movies and TV stuff that sits on that shelf. It's been there forever, even before this was a home theater room. So um, I want to show you guys this hilarious mistake I made when I first put the surround speakers in. It's so visible up there where you can see where I cut the hole and I was right on top of a stud and I had to move it and fill the hole. Unfortunately, you can totally see what I did there. Um, it's not noticeable unless you really look. But yeah, so I am waiting for my projector to get here Wednesday. Meanwhile, I've got work to do in this room. I already have everything taped off. Um, these closet doors are going to be permanently removed. They are going to be curtains here. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to get rid of that door as well and just do a curtain on the outside of the door. So I think what I'll do is a curtain rod up there with two curtains that hang straight down to the ground right there. Black. Um, I think that's what I'll do. Not sure yet. But um, I think on the inside here, you'd be able to see a lot of ambient light from the other room. And my concern there is that. So maybe I'll do two sets, one on the inside, one on the outside, like two on the outside, two on the inside for a total of four curtains that you walk through. Um, that'll also help with the sound deadening. Um, so I'm not sure yet. But yeah, just a little update. I still gotta take the Echo Show out of the wall here. Um, I got to remove these speakers, this vent, pull the bell off the fan and slide it down a little bit so I can paint underneath that if I can even get that down without removing the, uh, might not be able to get that down without removing the uh, fan blades, which is going to suck. So I'm going to start working on that now and I'll update you guys in another video. Have a good day. All right, got the door prepped up. So that's where I'm going to stop the paint right there. I am going to paint up the the hole right here where the, what, I forgot what that's called, strike plate. Is that what it is? I'm not sure. The hinges are going to get painted, all this trim. Um, I'm going to start with a brush and go ahead and do all the trim right now. So I don't have to mask off anything here because I'm just doing the outside of this trim. I'm doing the shelf there as well. All this. And I think I have like a little baby roller brush I can use. I gotta go look. I think I had a cabinet roller, but maybe I don't have it here. So that's my next step. I'm gonna go ahead and break open this Italian leather paint and go ahead and start painting. All right, I got my paint station set up here in the kitchen. Um, got my drop cloth here, my little roller tray, my roller with the appropriate uh, thingy, uh, roller refill, whatever it is, brush. Um, I shook this up really well. I got my vinyl gloves on here and just remember when you're doing this, have a bunch of paper towels ready. It is water-based. It will come off of anything. Like literally it will wipe off of anything or when it's done, you can literally just take your fingernail or a scraper and scrape it off. It's not going to stick to anything permanently except your walls. So make sure this is shaken up well before you do it. I know you guys all know how to paint. But um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and pour some of this out. And likely, since I decided why not start, I just, I'm going to start the walls too. So I got my roller out for that. I got my paint here, which is not enough to do the whole room and the ceiling. So I'm probably going to run out. But I took a picture of this barcode so that it can easily be um, redone at Lowe's. So I'm going to go ahead and take that off. Now remember one other thing. When you pour your paint out, always, 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 always 
wipe off the paint that's dripping down the side. See what happens if you don't right here. As soon as you're done pouring, get some paper towels, wipe it off. Get yourself like a Publix bag like this or a Walmart bag. Put all your paint paper towels in there and throw them in the garbage. I'm going to go ahead and pour some paint out right now and start. All right, guys, got the trim painted around the door here. Just going to tell you this straight up, dude. If you're painting dark over white, dark over light, period, it's going to take multiple coats. But I encourage you to use the guarantee on this paint that says one coat coverage because, okay, yeah, right. One coat is not, okay, one coat. Come on, man. Take it back to the store, get a free gallon to finish the rest. That's what I'm going to do because this is not covering in one coat. Not even close. Look at this. I know because when I painted this wall, it took like four coats. So I'm going to go ahead and get my little extension for my roller so I can go all the way up to the ceiling there. I'll do as much as I can today without doing around the projector because I don't know if I need to raise it or lower it. But I'm going to do it till I run out of paint probably. And I still got to take that off and take the speakers out and take this ceiling fan bell out. I'll update you guys shortly. All right, guys, a little update here. Got some of the ceiling painted there. Got this wall. Some of this has two coats, some has one. It's just really hard to keep up with. Got my fan going. Got my fan going. Got my vodka going, just kidding. Got the speaker out. Got the vent out. Both of those got to get painted matte black. I got a whole new tray of paint. So it is time to tackle this entire quadrant right here and I'll update you guys but yeah that's what it looks like so far definitely some needs a second coat maybe a third coat yeah look at that update you soon another tedious update got that much done it's gonna take me probably an entire day because I gotta do all this so I'm gonna keep on plugging away, but I'm gonna stop right there until I know if the projector is actually gonna fit. All right, just got back from Lowe's and Walmart, picked up a bunch of stuff, picked up some black um, receptacles and switches for the room here. Now I am updating you guys with the rest. So I am painting the vent, the Echo Show, um, wall mount and my surround sound speaker um, flanges, uh, mounts, whatever they're called, black right now. So I wanted to show you guys this and then I'll show you the progress on the room. Stayed up pretty late painting. Um, definitely needs another coat in a lot of places. Yeah, probably in most places it looks like. I'm going to go ahead and start on that now. I did go get another gallon of paint because I used almost all of it. And I have to get around that ceiling fan up there and also around the stand up here but I'm waiting to see if I'm gonna have to move it before I paint um, hoping I don't have to lower it I also need to take this window up but yeah so this is what it looks like before um, we get all the black receptacles and stuff in and then I think I'm gonna pull these specialty receptacle plates out and just paint them um, since it's gonna be hard to find black ones but um, especially for like some of these. But yeah, so I'm about to get my, my paint ready, start that. And then also these guys take about, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes between coats. But there's all the ceiling stuff and wall stuff painted black. And I'll be back soon. All right, guys, a little update here. So I got all the black wall plates installed and receptacles black switch i'm painting the blank that goes right here matte black i got the echo show 5 mount here so the way this goes in this is so awesome so you just literally like push it into the wall and then it's got um four clips are you trying to shop the five mount okay that's funny amazon's talking to me on the... so you just put these Four little clips 
in there to hold this mount in and it kind of secures it up against the drywall and if you look at my um, whole uh, smart home tour I kind of go over this these guys get power from the switch below you can see it right there and so it makes it super easy to put these mounts in um, but look you can see how the clips like hold on the the mount they just kind of push up against the drywall like that such a cool thing you just use a drywall knife to cut it out so yeah so black 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 there let's grab the echo show so i do have the skin coming for the echo show and it's a space skin so now all we have to do is find the power here it's right there Plug this dude in, hard with one hand, but I'm gonna figure it out. Okay, so he's plugged in now. Now, of course, it looks ridiculous because it's white, but I mean. That's it, it's in. It's gonna look so much better with that skin on it. And there it goes, powering up. Got the projector power changed out to black and the little brush plate is now painted. Um, got the, got to get the in-ceiling speakers. I'm going to go do that now and then I'll update you guys after. All right guys, time to reassemble the surround speakers. Um, these guys just literally screw right into these like this I did notice that this paint is really easy to mess up so I have to be super careful reassembling these things so I'm gonna go ahead and put the screws back in right there to the end ceiling speakers okay I got the speakers reassembled there's the grills there's the brush plate for the home theater projector mount so now I am going to get these things installed right now I'm gonna go ahead and take the opportunity to put spade connectors on the wiring coming out of the ceiling because they were just wrapped around these terminals so I'll show you guys that once I get in there all right got my crimp tool and if you guys didn't know the color of the actual spade is on the tool to show you where to crimp it see the red and so that tells you what gauge wiring you're using 22 to 18 and then you take your crimp tool and your red spades and we are going to apply them to that boy right there i'll show you when it's done all right could not get the red on there so i switched to blue which are a little bit larger that worked perfect the reds were pulling right off i'm going to go ahead and get that speaker mounted and the way this works is they have little feet that hook on the drywall right there so you rotate the feet in all the feet go in Like this, somehow, some way, they rotate in, and then once they hit the drywall, they spin and they grip the drywall. So they rotate in like that. Yeah, I'll figure it out. I need two hands. But yeah, those are the little feet that grab the drywall. All right, I got one speaker in. As you can see, the paint doesn't hold up very well to touching it. Um, same experience I had in the car. And a couple of the mounting screws didn't really catch. I don't know why. If it rattles, I'll pull it down and try again. But I think it's in there pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and do the next one. Got the surround sound speakers installed. Again, two of the screws would not engage on this piece of crap. So we will see what happens in that case. If it rattles, I'll have to take them out and do it again. I'm going to work on the AC vent now. AC vent is done. I'm going to grab the brush opening for the power for the projector now. Get that installed. It is out here drying. 
and the blank switch plate. Get those installed. Not before I don't take a shot though. So the blank switch plate goes here and the brush goes up there. I'm gonna do that now. All right guys, got the black receptacle and brush plate installed up there. It looks awesome. I know the cable's still white. I uh, might have to just like take a freaking um, Sharpie to that and turn it black. But yeah, so I gotta still do all those. So I gotta take all those off, paint those, and that little breakout adapter. Maybe, I'm not sure. I might get another entertainment center. I saw a really cool one on walmart.com that I want. It's like 70 bucks, not a big deal. So I might just do that and not have to worry about these. You don't really see them even with my current setup, but um, now I am going to work on the curtains here for the closet. This is going to be traded out for curtains. No more door. Oh, I'll show you the curtains. So in here we got the curtains for that. And these are the Sun Zero blackout curtains. I know, no light comes in, but still, I just thought they looked cool. And then we got this, uh, easiest way to do this when you remove your closet is to use a shower curtain rod like this. One that expands and locks into place. It probably will take all of five minutes to do this install. So I'm going to work on that now and I'll show you guys what it looks like after. No more louvered no they're not even louvered actually they're just uh these kind of doors here and they are going away forever that'll be coming up next all right got the curtains installed and painfully obvious the curtain rod needs to be painted black for sure and i don't know if i have these curtains on there correctly but i'll leave it to um, Susie to figure that part out, but, um, that is going to be the closet and it's going to look way better with the lights off. I know it looks kind of like reflective or whatever, but once it's dark in here, I mean, it's going to look fine. It just definitely needs to be, I can't believe the back of these things are white. Seriously. I'm probably going to have to take those back and get something that's not white in the back. It just doesn't look good. But also that needs to be on the inside there. I guess it would work. But that bar's got definitely got to be painted white. Absolutely. Or black, sorry. And then this will be good to go. Um, I do have a set for here, a double set, but now I'm thinking that those are gonna have to go back because they're white on one side and I just I really don't like, I don't like that. I don't like how the white shows through and they're kind of reflective. So I might take those back and get the charcoal ones. All right, guys, I totally forgot to update you when I was doing the curtains. I did get back from Walmart, got these curtains um, on where the closet door used to be. And I used a rod that goes through the middle. It's three panels and I've got the doors that were on here inside the closet for now till I can figure out what to do with them but as you can see this came out pretty awesome so that's the closet which i really wanted to move all the equipment into the closet and then run everything up through the ceiling but it's a lot of trouble to do that put the receiver in there and all that so i just left everything up front um, i then got the blinds installed these are brand new blinds and they are the ones without a cord so you just lower and raise them um, down here um, with the you just pull on the bottom of them um, I just put my curtain rod bracket supports back up these are the original curtains that were here before these black ones I'm gonna go ahead and hang those up right now got the curtains installed um, pretty dark with the blinds closed these are faux wood blinds they're like the most darkening you can get and this room is, is very dark with uh, everything shut. I'm going to now work on this door. So what we are doing here is a, two panels on the inside of the room and two panels on the outside of the room. So um, I got to put up, uh, first put up curtain rod hanger 
here, here are the rods that are going up there. So I just got to hang these real quick. I'm going to start on the outside of the door and get that set done now. All right, guys. Got the entryway curtain done. So you can't put the little ball on that end because it's right up against the wall. But um, basically, let's see how dark it gets now with no lights on in here. Ah, oh, see, yeah, that's perfect. That, that, that's, that's amazing. I'm very happy with that. And then there's a tiny bit of light coming in on the corner of the blind there. But I don't know what I can do about that. Yeah, there's some light coming in up in the corner up here that I'm going to probably have to deal with. But other than that, it's dark enough in here for sure during the day. So the screen looks absolutely great. If I can find the remote here. Let me turn this music down. So, Wow. That's crazy. That's HDR. So that's 4K with HDR. And of course, you're not going to get the full effect from my camera, but um, it's absolutely awesome. This, this Anchor Cosmos Max 4K is, they're not paying me to do this. They're not sponsored or anything. This thing looks great. Now I'm shooting this on the phone at 4K 60, which is what the video is. And the phone does HDR as well. But, I mean, that's a good example if you go here. Um, this is a Atmos demo. And it's got true black. Of course, this projector is not going to go true black. It's going to be grayish. Um, let's look at some of these other ones. Wow, that's awesome. So cool. So here in a second, I'm going to turn the lights on. I've got a couple more things to do before I reveal the room to you guys. Okay, it's time to hook up the uh, JBL studio monitors um, the correct way. They've always kind of just been barely hooked up. So um, I have some flat speaker wire that I'm going to use. I want to just try this because I'm running this under the carpet right there. Um, hopefully it's enough gauge I'm, I'm not sure what gauge it is let's see if it says we're not pushing like a ton of power through the fronts so i've got my speaker wire here i got my banana plugs and i am ready to start doing some damage here so i'm going to start by oh, i got these i got these rugs too for under the speakers these guys So just gray rugs, they're going to go on each side, right here on the floor. Kind of dampen the room a little bit more too, the sound. The more fabric you have, the better. So that's going in the corner right there and it matches this rug. Speaker's going to go on there. It's going to also allow me to run the wire under the carpet right here and since it's flat it shouldn't get in the way and I have another mat for that side I'm going to install and I'll update you guys when I start doing banana plugs well it took me forever to figure it out <laughs> of course it fell off right when I said that well I had the banana plug on but I can't seem to figure out how these stupid things work they're the most ridiculous plugs I've ever seen in my life so I guess I got to put that one back on now finally got the plug back on man these things suck um, we got these a while back on eBay, I think, but I got this one side ready to plug into the speaker. I'm going to go ahead and do that now, get my appropriate length to the back of the receiver right here, and then put the other set of plugs on. Got the wire run underneath the rug here, got the banana plugs on the other end. It's ready to go to the back of the receiver now, and then I'm going to do some wiring cleanup back there as well. I got my zip ties ready, get everything nice and neat back there. I'm going to do that now. All right, I got all my wiring done. These are the front speakers. Um, unfortunately, I don't know which one's left and which one is right. So I'm gonna run a test tone here real quick and see 
which one is which. After 10 more minutes of messing around with this speaker not working, of course the banana plugs pulled out three times in a row, so I ditched them and just to use the rear speaker terminals. Um, now I'm running the configuration to make sure that I have the speakers in the right um, jacks. So you just go to channel level and it sends a test tone. So yeah, there's front left, so center. I'll go back. Center. It actually works. I can't believe it. So the banana plugs come out again. Um, and then I don't have height speakers. Okay, my surround sound speakers are reversed. I need to correct that real quick. All right, guys, got the wiring all finished as best I can. I just need a shorter Ethernet cable. That's what's really um, taking up a lot of space back there. I order like a six inch one. And that's going to be it for today's video. You can see I got the speakers all wired up. And I will be making a reveal video and that will premiere tomorrow. So please check it out when it gets done. Thanks, you guys, for watching.